Hello, welcome once again to CityScope. I'm your host, Jeff Pearson. And today we're gonna to talk about what wonderful things are happening all over the state, but one specific festival that happens here in Charleston, West Virginia. Of course, summer is uh, here with us. Uh, we're here as a season, not here with us literally. But we're talking about festival and what it's bringing to Charleston and has been for now 15, 20 years. Um, Mackenzie, welcome. Uh, Mackenzie Spencer from Festival is here to talk to us a little bit about the festival and how it began and where it's going. Absolutely. So what was it, 2005, correct? 2005 was the first festival and it was a three day, kind of a long weekend mm -hmm. type event. And now we continue to expand constantly. One of the things we talk about in this program a lot is how you take what one community is doing and replicate around the yeah. state. And that happens a lot with public art. And we were, um, some members of our leadership team uh, way back then went down to uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Yeah. And that's what I understand. It's Spoleto, right? Spoleto, yes. Spoleto, Spoleto. <laughs> yeah, so. Tomato, tomato. Fest exactly. So festival <laughs> was mirrored after a couple of different events. Right. Spoleto being the main one, which is a an arts festival that's still happening mm -hmm. in Charleston, South Carolina. But, you know, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival right. and some other festivals. And Belcher, I think, was yeah, one. Yeah, around the world have really kind of contributed to what festival is. And then it kind of took on a life of its own, kind of uh, looking at what Charleston has and the talent that we really have here. And that's really kind of helped it expand. One thing that, um, and we've certainly talked about this before, but it's, I think it's worth mentioning again, is that one thing the festival did was bring people together. Organizations Absolutely. specifically, you had um, amazing arts organizations in the city, but they weren't really necessarily working together yeah. as much. It was a huge collaboration between the big names like Charleston Ballet, Light Opera Guild, at the time, Charleston Stage Company, yeah. um, the Clay Center, at the, at the time was probably no, it was it was already the Clay Center. But um, <laughs> it, I think of Sunrise. I'm a little bit old, I think maybe. Um, <laughs> but no, there and so that brought those folks together, and they started creating these ideas in the collaboration, and bringing in. Um, national acts and then absolutely uh, lifting up our locals absolutely you know. and that's still such the heart of festival and what we do I mean the collaborations are really what makes festival mm -hmm. a success each and every year and you have you know the ones that you mentioned but January's Dance Company right, River City Youth Ballet uh, CYAC Children's Theater of Charleston that obviously the public uh, art office for the city of Charleston right, right. you know we have so many people and now we're getting into some other partners like you know the Charleston Dirty Birds is a partner this mm -hmm. year we've got other folks that are stepping in because they see the collaborative the collaborative spirit of festival yeah it makes it makes our community smaller by making it bigger and absolutely it, it, we, we see everybody coming together and everybody wants to be a part of festival. Yeah. And it's and funny because we hear this sometimes in public art office as well because we, people think of public art in the summertime. Mm -hmm. And people think, we got to do, you have to do it during festival. <laughs> and then you're like, everybody at the festival is like, wait, we can do other things other times. Yeah. But it's become a thing where people want to be part of festival. Absolutely. And I mean, we get people all the time that call and say, hey, we we're thinking about this program. Mm -hmm. We would love to see if it works out with your dates. We'd love to see if we could help market and help support each other and really add to what festival is going to be. Yeah, and we, we're talking um, about all these things. We'll probably jump back and forth yeah. with some of the events, but you're now, this is your second year. It's, it's, um, uh, I've been there right at a year. Right. Uh, I, I came in year, April yeah. right before festival wow. happened last year. Yeah, that's right. So that's right, it was yeah. like in the lead up to festival. We were already at a sprint at that point. That's right. Sure. Yeah, I remember that now. With, and <laughs> yeah. um, um, then it's important to note that it's small staff. Yes, very small, very small staff, staff with a, a great impact for our city. Yes, <laughs> and I wouldn't say just our city. We have a lot of people come in for um, festival. Oh, absolutely! And it's become an event that people look forward to. And yeah. what, before you were, let's go way back. Okay. From the, from your <laughs> recollection of the very beginning, before you were uh, ever thought about being the director, in those first couple of years. <laughs> yeah. Do you, what do you remember about festival? Oh, I mean, I just remember how vibrant the city is. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many people were out, how mm -hmm. many things there were to do. Uh, you know, we would growing up go from event to event to event and make a full day out of it. So uh, I remember how many options there were and how many things there were to try. Because, uh, right. you know, there are a lot of things with festival uh, that are free, that are just open to the public, mm -hmm. very accessible, that are things you may not have thought about being part of before or going to before. And so uh, I like that aspect of festival is that you can go, you can try new things and see what might interest you. And does any one thing stand out from your first 
first couple years of, of being oh, here. Oh, gosh. I mean, Dizzy Doc's balloon sculptures right, at the right. mall. <laughs> That's and probably... And the, he's still going? Right? He is. So where, where does he do it now? He's actually going to be at the Clay Center for That's the very first That's time. That's what I thought. Okay. Uh, and yeah. so he's kind of moved around a bit um, since the, uh, the Town Center Mall has shifted a bit. And so he's going to be at the Clay Center kind of right as you go inside where the climbing sculpture is and that big kind of open area. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where he's going to do a lot of his work. And it's funny because there's there's things like Dizzy Docks that people, there's these staples now of, yeah. of festival. And if you don't do them, oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness <laughs> you. Uh, I talked to him this morning. He's definitely coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, you know, the first year, even from the standpoint of public art, festival kind of helped initiate some temporary pieces mm-hmm. that we still think about, like the catfish yeah. you know, and things like And now we have... Uh, porch parade and and uh, we'll talk about that in just a yeah. bit too. Yeah. So and speaking of the kind of the newer things, um, it's your again your second festival first year in. Yes. Is there things that you're seeing will be like you know I know Larry, Brittany, Maria, yep. all former directors had to kind of their stamp like yeah. this is this is something that I I'm going to do <laughs> and they left us with yeah. and um and well, even David Wall he was mm-hmm. kind of in between there too. Yeah. Um, what is what? What do you want to have happen? Or maybe it's something you're already doing. <laughs> I, I mean, I think at this point it's still a little fluid. Uh, or I think <laughs> yeah. we're still trying to, yeah. you know, we have been able to thankfully keep a lot of those traditional things right, happening. Right. Uh, you know, the Sunrise Carriage Trail, mm-hmm. obviously the Capitol Street Art Fair and the Children's Art Fair are enormous, and those are things that people really equate with festival. But we we are bringing in a few new things this time that we. Uh, would love to see kind of stick around in different aspects, but I mean, it would be something like different performers every year, but the same kind of programming. So mm-hmm. we're still trying to work a few of those things out, but we definitely uh, want to keep things interesting from year to year. One thing is, one of the things that you mm-hmm. mentioned before that I want to touch on is that yeah. festival is kind of a breeding ground for ideas, mm-hmm. and it just takes. And we've talked about this in the public art realm before. It takes one idea. And that idea is a spark that kind of creates this Absolutely. firestorm of, of, of events, programming, public art, whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, one of those that come to mind is three things. Yeah. Um, talk to me, folks that don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> what, what is three things and... Talk to me a little bit about how that all started. Sure, absolutely. So Three Things is a speaker series that Festival has kind of taken under our umbrella, but was the brainchild of Jeff Shirley. And if you don't know Jeff, Jeff works with Mountain Stage, works with West Virginia Public Broadcasting, is really uh, ingrained in all that they Mm -hmm. do there. And so Jeff sort of had the idea of, you know, wanting to get to know your neighbors better, your friends and people in West Virginia uh, Mm -hmm. about not only their professional lives, but their personal lives. And so three things stands for first, favorite, future. And that's all Jeff tells somebody when they book. Um, They, you go up, you have 20 minutes, you know, tell us all about your first, your favorite, and your future, whatever that means to you. Um, It's a monthly series that we run from February to October. And it is so brilliantly simple but so complex in the way that people yeah. view the prompt and take it in every direction you've ever seen. And it's the way that he programs it, it's it's three people each time. And yes. It's three three diff, very different. Very different And it's, so it's always entertaining. Yeah. Um, I was on, I think maybe the first season, I don't yep. remember. You were. But I was with Spencer <laughs> Elliott and Crystal Good. Mm-hmm. Spencer plays, uh, he's a guitar virtuoso at this point. Yeah. And of course, uh, Crystal's in a lot of things, but she's most known for her poetry. Yes. And it was, it, it's so eclectic. And then you, I mean, yeah. it's not just artists, um, but we've had some amazing it's artists. It's everyone. Yeah. And the people um, from our community that you you kind of knew them, but you didn't really know what they were exactly. into. Exactly. I think it's really cool this year. Um, you know, Ted Brightwell. Yes. Who's a, a great member of our community. We love but also, Ted. so is Miss Vicky. Exactly. And so Ted's alter ego. Um, <laughs> and so Miss Vicky is doing her own three things. This is it during Cor- festival? Correct. Okay. It is during festival. Yeah. And yeah, we're going to be doing that at the Capitol Market. And so uh, the other guests on that episode are Margaret O'Neill, mm-hmm. who runs oh, sure. the United Way sure. of Central West Virginia, who is phenomenal. Right. And uh, Erica Conley, who runs Canal County Libraries. Right. Um, and so then Miss Vicky will be our uh, third guest. And actually, Matt Jackford will be playing uh, his own version of the Three Things theme song that uh, Larry Gross and um, uh, Jeff Shirley wrote right. on the piano. Okay. So he's, he's put together a piano version. One thing yeah, mentioned yeah. is a lot of times we'll have a performing artist on that will perform. Yes. And then, of course, you know, we have a lot of visual artists that's been on the show, or not we, you, um, 
and uh, show their work and share their work. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, uh, Perry Bennett, who is mm. the photographer for mm. the West Virginia Senate, uh, came on a few months ago, and he used a lot of his photography work, not only with the Senate, but some of the other pieces that he's done, whether photographs or uh like NASCAR races, even that he has photographed for magazines and things like that. He used a lot of those in his yeah. talk. And Perry's one of those artists. And you know, as we're mentioning some of these artists, check them out. You know, check oh, them out their websites, Google them. Yeah. Um, because he's an artist. He, like you said, he covers the Senate, but his his the theatrical performance pieces are amazing. He does a lot with the Charleston Ballet yeah, and their photography. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, so this year, what's the most notable, and maybe, maybe it's still fluid, but is, <laughs> is there a notable thing you've never done that you're doing this year? So one of the things that hasn't been done in a while, but is something that festival kind of sears to, or the mm -hmm. things that are maybe a little more unique, a little quirky, a little fun. Um, and Jonathan Burns, who is a comedian, contortionist, magician, kind of all in one is going to be performing uh, on the Clay Center stage uh, with us as part of festival. And he's been on uh, America's Got Talent. He was on Penn and Teller's Full Us show. Uh, he's been on most of the late night TV shows okay. at this point. Yeah. So uh, somebody, and he also has played the Edinburgh Fringe Festival that we talked about a little earlier. So uh, he's somebody that we're really excited about. But one of the things that we're going to get the opportunity to this year is to really showcase West Virginians that have gone on to okay, yeah. go to bigger cities and things like that. And so that's one thing that we really want to try to continue to highlight are who are folks that have grown up right here in the mountain state that are born and bred that have gone to do other things and how can we bring them back home yeah. to show off those talents? It's incredible. We have a lot of, I don't know if this is true, rather other towns or cities across the country, but People have such pride that are from here. Absolutely. We've talked about this, I mean, back when we had to show artworks. You yeah. Know, we talked about that then. Um, uh, we were just talking the other day about Sam Trammell. And, oh, yeah. Sam's um, great. He comes back and does things. And, and of course, um, a lot of times during festival, Jennifer yeah. will come back. Jennifer Garner. Yeah, and, Jennifer was here last weekend, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the people, and it's great because they can come back and not be themselves. And, and they're, exactly. But they're so, even when they're out talking with, on talk shows and things, mm -hmm. they're always so prideful of being from Absolutely. West Virginia. So it's always nice to bring them back. Yeah. And, you know, America's got talent. You know, Landau comes back and does things with us yep. all the time. And we have our own, our local artists, and, and, and lift them up. And speaking Absolutely. of, I want to just take a few minutes and talk. Um, you've had a very particular performance artist be an I iconic um, mm -hmm. part of festival, and that's Jude Bender. Absolutely. Um, I'm not exactly sure myself how Jude became involved. Do you remember, have, have, have you heard the story? Or I, like I know that Jude was involved from almost the very beginning. Right. Um, and I, I believe that there was uh, folks that were um, familiar with her kind of art school that she has. Right. Heart, Heartwood uh, in the Hills. Heartwood yeah. in the Hills. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, I mean, Jude has such a love of costuming and mask making. Right. And so uh, through that, kind of the festival princess was born. Uh, and Jude has been the festival princess since the beginning. And she hand makes all of her costumes and her masks. And so anytime you see her out, she hand makes everything that she brings with her. And she does such a great job. Yeah. And it, it, again, it's become so iconic yeah. to festival. People relate her so much to festival. Mm -hmm. If you see the princess or you see Jude, you just immediately think of festival. Yeah. And she does make her own costumes, and the masks are incredibly They're unique and intricate. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so and, and it, it 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 allows people to kind of connect with this uh, an image, of, absolutely, and, um, of, of what she's been able to do. And she's not she's she's been around for a long time doing this with, yeah. with dance and mask making. We're very lucky to and have her. And we're very excited to, for her to be back again this year. Uh, I actually talked to her a couple days ago, oh, too. <laughs> and uh, She'll definitely be here for several events mm -hmm. uh, throughout both weekends. And uh, she's thrilled to be part of everything. Well, and the, yeah. she was here towards the beginning. And mm -hmm. there are kids that grew up with her. And Absolutely. My own child <laughs> uh, who's... Part of festival, we'll say, um, <laughs> Blue Bunny. In uh, many, in yeah, I'll say in many yeah, ways, actually. It's, it's interesting because we were comparing a photograph mm -hmm. of the first year that she was with Jude <laughs> yep. to, to last year, and the Blue Bunny kind of stretched <laughs> a little bit. But also, you know, even again, my own experience with my own daughter when she was, you know, uh, tiny. Yeah. 
baby. I have pictures of her and Jude, and I'm sure that's true for a lot of people. Yeah. Their kids have grown up with her. Absolutely. Um, and well, and we have kids that come up to us at different events and say, where's the Festival Princess? Mm -hmm, where's mm -hmm. Blue Bunny? Where right. are all of these things? And so, uh, the, I mean, the kids expect it, and they're mm -hmm. excited about it. And actually, uh, coming up on the screen right now is a piece that uh, Jeff's daughter, uh, Sylvia, did for Art for All. Um, last year or the year before, uh, and won first place uh, as part of that program as well, which is also coming back for festival. You know, and again, I certainly don't want to make this episode about my daughter, but uh, <laughs> I hope you're watching, Sylvia. We um, love her. Yeah. So one of the things that was really interesting too, when she was when Sylvia was three, um, she was three. Mm -hmm. uh, she wanted to. Um, she did this painting of Elton John. Mm -hmm. or, I'm sorry. The first one was Paul McCartney. I forget which, actually. But it, <laughs> they, it was like kindergarten through yeah. fifth grade or something, whatever the content. And we called and said, well, she's not in kindergarten yet. <laughs> so that we could, you could let her apply or, or enter or whatever. And she entered and she won. And we were like, Sylvia, it's not about the reward, whatever. And she continued to do really well. Yeah. And, and, and it, but it became part of sharing her work each mm -hmm. year and watching her grow and people didn't really always know it was her work, but she was in the show. And yeah. this past year, she kind of aged out of that category yeah. of kindergarten through seven, six, seven. Kinder yeah. So it's pre-K through six yeah. for art for all in the summer. Right. And then we now have uh, art for fall, That's right. which is seventh through twelfth that we do in October as part of Festival yeah. Fall. And yeah, yeah so it, it, it we saw that journey, and yeah. uh, it was sad to see it. And I mean, <laughs> now she moved on to fall, but she, you know, but there's so many kids <laughs> out there that's, that's been through that journey yeah. as well. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've seen it through her eyes, of course, but. Um, it's incredible what it's done for our young people, and, yeah. and they, they're all growing up now. I mean, absolutely. Uh, so my nephew, uh, we took him to his first press fell when it first started, and he's now 19. And oh, it, like yeah. I have pictures of him with catfish, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and some of the early on, there was the temporary pieces of public art that we uh, created just for the festival. Yeah. And um, segue, uh, <laughs> porch <laughs> porch parade. One of the things yeah. that was born out of COVID was these temporary pieces for um, front yards. Yes. Um, we called it porch parade because we couldn't have an actual art parade. Yeah, and people, people couldn't gather enough on the sidewalks and things like that to yeah. be able to do a And people loved it parade. so much, we kept it. We kept it. So yes. uh, it was for great. those who don't know, what is porch parade? So porch parade is temporary installations of art done by different artists. Um, and we kind of put them in on the porches or in the yards and things of folks on the east end of Charleston. And so you kind of go at your leisure. You can kind of walk, you can bike, you can drive, you can do it however you please, but you can go and see all these temporary installations that'll be up during the length of festival. And we have our artists, we know who they are. We do. Um, do you remember them all? <laughs> <laughs> I think I do. I was going to say. <laughs> it's a partnership between the city and, and uh, it is. festival. So we have, this year we have Brianna Taft. Yes. Um, Elizabeth Turner. Yeah. Um, we have. Liz uh, Pavlovic. Liz. And. Uh, Caroline Murphy. Ca Caroline's new this year. We yep. have. Um, uh, it's all women this year. Uh, of course. Well, I mean, it's all women except for Jeff Pearson. Except for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are, and so uh, Vasily Ascoris and yes. I um, always do a collaborative collaborate. piece. It's, it's always an artist. Yes. And this year um, we're doing an artist that most people haven't heard about. We mm -hmm. always we did Frida and Van Gogh. This year we're doing yeah. uh, Basquiat. Yes. Uh, so Google that. Uh, Which we are thrilled about. Yeah. We're very excited. Um, <laughs> but it's a great partnership, and we always yeah. have fun making those. And we and then Art Parade is coming back. Yes, it is. Um, so people can enter that it's uh free to enter and it's oh, yeah, gonna be a great, great fun we always have fun with that yeah one. bring organizations bring your bands bring you know whatever creative thing that you have uh we'd love to have it you know uh one of the past art buses is going to be in the parade uh jeff has brought something that'll be part of uh an entry for the office of public art so there's several different groups that are going to be joining us we're excited and that's going to actually lead and segue right into an after party at the capital market yeah, and it's it's one of those things where we we see people from outside the city mm -hmm. doing. Like, we have a great uh, sister organ, well, not sister organization, but we work with them a lot um, down in uh, Princeton, yeah. the Riff Raff, Riff Raff Art oh, Collective. Yeah. They do a lot of the, kind of the same things, and we'll often they'll they'll you know come and do things mm -hmm. as well with us. And so it, it's one of those things where we have so many more festivals that have popped up since two thousand five. Yeah. Um, that people that are in this kind of festival circuit, the artists that sell in the art fair, the performers, are moving all around the state and mm -hmm. doing things all, all over the place. So it's been a, a great growing opportunity for our, yeah. si for our cities and our, our, our state as a whole. And that's what we want. We want to be able to showcase, lo showcase local, regional talent, whether that be music, art, mm -hmm. theater, dance, otherwise. We want to be able to showcase, because we have so many talented 
friends and neighbors right here that we yeah. want to be able to and showcase. And we have um, the art fair, which was part of the beginning, but it's grown as well. It has. Um, we have how many artists this year? So we're right at about 70 artists that'll be with us on Capitol Street, and that's for the Capitol Street art fair side. And then uh, Children's Art Fair, we'll have a bunch of folks that'll be doing make and take crafts with the kids. We'll actually have organizations set up that'll be doing make and take crafts as well. So uh, there'll be music on both sides. We'll have uh, Orion the Amazing to do his stilt walking and juggling and things back. So lots to do for sure that's great <laughs> and then we have of course we haven't talked about concerts yet right so um this year the biggest one obviously is the mayor's concert we'll work our way down yeah so that's some of the other smaller ones but who's who do we have this year so the mayor's concert is going to be a free concert in mm -hmm. slack plaza uh, we did that last year for the first time coming out of covid and we were thrilled with the result and so yeah. we're gonna have food trucks there we'll have all kinds of fun stuff but it's gonna be headlined by aaron and the wildfire uh, out of Virginia. Okay. Um, and then we've got Juice Newsom in the Groove from Elkins. And then we got Four Chill from Charleston, the Charleston Huntington area. So, okay. Yeah. So got a lot of different fun, funky kind of things that'll be coming with us. So uh, we're excited for that. And then Clayton is going to have uh, Leslie... Leslie Odom Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which uh, if, you, if you're not familiar, Leslie Odom Jr. was the original uh, Aaron Burr as part of Broadway's Hamilton. And so he'll be coming to town on, on Tuesday the 13th, and he'll do some pieces from Hamilton, but he'll also do some original things. Um, and um, something you might also be familiar with him from is uh, Abbott Elementary uh, that's right. now on ABC. Uh, he just took uh, a part on that, so he's been in the past... Uh, the back half of last season, so uh, you've probably fun. seen him there yeah. as well. Yeah. And then I was looking at the schedule today, which, by the way, go to the website to get your schedules. Yeah. And uh, we had, there's printed schedules all over the city there and the are. state. There are, yes. Um, I was looking at today, and a uh, name I didn't recognize is Hannah Jane. So, yeah. So I Hannah, didn't recognize that. So, yeah, Hannah Jane, um, she is actually from the Canal City area. Okay. Um, she grew up in Canal City and at 13 moved to New York uh, to basically chase her dreams of uh, being in musical theater um, and so she has been in New York since, and she has been in a lot of off-Broadway productions. She has done some cabaret shows. She's actually uh, headlining her third um, cabaret show in New York City uh, this weekend. It's coming up. Um, but she's going to be doing a cabaret-style show at the Walker Theater at the Clay Center um, that is brand new to festival, uh, completely new, kind of a mismatch of things that she's been part of, uh, mm -hmm. some shows that she'd like to be part of, right. and kind of talk <laughs> about her journey of, like, moving to New York and how that has all progressed. Well, that's great. And then, yeah. you know, the Walker Theater, again, it's um, one of those gems we have in the city. Yeah. Where it's such a great theater. It, and, we're starting to u utilize things a little differently around around the city with the Coliseum yeah. using the what they're now calling the Charleston Theater, which was formerly the Little Theater. Yeah. Um, and there's so much going on there. And, it, and um, this June and July in Charleston is just filled with it's things. Packed. And we're I, I, I would want to mention Regatta, of course. Absolutely. And we go from festival right into Regatta, we do. and uh, the city is just crazy for a couple of months yeah. there. Yeah, we just and want to keep up the energy, keep yeah. up the momentum of all the things in Charleston. I mean, and once Brigada's done, you've got Multifest coming yeah. up after that. I mean, throughout all of it, you have Loud from the Levee, you've got Dirty Birds Baseball, you've got and Pride lots Month. of Pride, and, yeah. you've got lots of things to do. And yeah, <laughs> Rainbow Pride has been a great partner to us. They're doing yeah, a lot yeah. with them this year. Uh, speaking of partnerships, we, yeah. um, I don't want to, I'm sure we don't run out of time for this. We want to, we want to, <laughs> because we will have just announced the top three Art Bus winners when yes. this show airs. So what we'd like to do is we want to show you the top three Art Bus um, <laughs> selections for this year. Yes. We're going to talk about them just one by one. And you can go on the uh, festival website, Facebook, sorry, and <laughs> vote uh, for your favorite Art Bus. And we'll take... Uh, your 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 votes in consideration. Absolutely. Well, let's and, talk about these. Well, yeah. and so Art Bus, uh, yeah. just as a oh, quick yeah, overview. Oh <laughs> yeah. Art Bus started. Uh, this will be our fourth Art Bus. Right. Um, and so this is a collaboration between the Office of Public Art Festival, um, the uh, KRT system, Charleston Area Alliance. There are a lot of folks that came in together on this, but basically, turn a city bus into, and really a county bus, it goes all over Kanawha right. County, but turn it into a work of art and really showcase art in a different way, a fun way that we could continue to add to public art without it being 
just you know stagnant on a wall or things like and that. We, making it functional. We, and Absolutely. We, we've done a lot of that kind of functional public art, and this mm -hmm. has been the, kind of the biggest impactful, one, the most impactful one we've been able to do. Yeah. So go and check it out. Vote. We uh, saw Brianna Taft there, uh, Wes Geary, and of course Liz Pavlovic. Yes. Um, and they're, they'll be out there ready for your votes, uh, to vote for those. And, um, and the plan is to unveil the final bus as part of Festa Fall, right. which will be in October. And we hope that uh, with all projects we do, we can people might watch this show, let's try that in our part yeah. of the state, that kind of thing. Um, what do you think, um, ten, five, ten years from now, Festa, where, where do you think Festival, or where, maybe where do you want Festival to be? I really think that Festival has what it takes to be a not only a leader in the nation as far as arts festivals, mm -hmm. um, but really become sort of a standard um, for people that are trying to launch new arts festivals uh, throughout the country. Um, and so, you know, I'd love to see uh, Festival continue to grow and continue to grow in its audience uh, and attendees to be to bring more people to Charleston to maybe out expand outside of mm -hmm. just the boundary of Charleston, but also I'd really love to see us take a more of an educational piece for artists, um, to be able to provide master classes for artists to be able to continue to grow in their mediums. And if they'd like to try other mediums and be able to be, uh, that kind of a resource for them as well. We do a lot of educational things for youth. We do a lot of educational things for the public, right. but I'd really love to expand that more for the artists themselves. I think one thing, festival, it, it's not just a festival mm -hmm. anymore. There's been so many things that has, has come out of festival and it's year round. Yes. It, oh, it yeah. went from three days to year round. It's Absolutely. Incredible. Yeah, because we have festival in June, festival in October, uh, the Three Things Speaker Series, which we talked about monthly from February to October. But we also have our neighborhood neighborhood arts program mm -hmm. that really goes in. We go into the schools. We go into the after school programs. We go into uh, a lot of our community groups to provide in seat art education to provide tickets to cultural events for students that may not otherwise have the opportunity to go to things, you know, go to Mountain Stage, go to the Charleston Light Opera Guild, go to the Clay Center. We provide tickets for them. So that's something we also want to grow oh, in yeah. the future. There's so much. And we, as always, we always run out of time. Because there's so <laughs> much to talk about. Um, but as you see on the, on the page, on the uh, screen now, yeah. there, go check it out. Check out the website. See what you can get yourself in with your family. Uh, for Festival 2023. Mackenzie, thank you so much for joining us, talk, talking about Festival and what's going on this year. And we can't wait to see what happens. Thank and you in the so future much. as well. And thank you for tuning in to CityScope. We'll see you next time. We'll talk more about what's happening in Charleston, West Virginia.